Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel dedicated to security and privacy. In this video, we will explore the critical topic of input validation and why it's essential for writing secure code in programming languages like C and PHP. This video is part of a series on secure coding and make sure to check out other videos in this series. Now let's begin with C programming. One common vulnerability in C is using the gets function to read user input. The gets function reads characters from the standard input until it encounters a new line character without considering the length of the input or buffer size. Here's an example that uses gets in order to compare an input string with the actual password. The final program looks like this. You can see that the password is read by the function gets and that it, if the string comparison yields zero, which evaluates to false, it shows correct password and false password otherwise. The crucial point is the buffer overflow, which I will not go into detail about, but the point is that the, the variable check is declared after the array buffer, meaning I can overwrite it if I overflow the buffer. This is possible to the usage due to the usage of gets because gets has no bounds checking. Let me show you how it looks. Obviously, using the correct password works, but uh, using a wrong password does not, if it has 10 or less characters. As soon as I enter a password that has more than 10 characters, I overflow the buffer and check is set to any value, but it's not zero, and therefore I'm now root. That's real hacking for you. Now, obviously, it's a very artificial example, but it just serves to illustrate a point. To mitigate this vulnerability, it's crucial to use input validation techniques like uh, fgets. The fgets function reads a specified number of characters from the input stream and stores them in a buffer like gets. However, fgets ensures that the buffer size is not exceeded. By using fgets with the appropriate buffer size, we can prevent buffer overflow vulnerabilities. It ensures that the user input is truncated or rejected if it exceeds a specified length, providing a safer and more secure code implementation. Again, um, in this case, using the correct password works, a wrong one fails. But even uh, using an exceedingly long password, so more than 10 characters, which is still the, the size of our buffer, uh, it will not overflow uh, the check variable as fgets checks the bounds of the input and truncates it accordingly. So using fgets is safer than using gets, obviously, but checking that your input is what you expect it to be is more than just using safe function. For the second example, we look at SQL injections. Let's assume we have this username password combo to log into a website. Let's look at the code. This builds the database connection and the query is constructed by the variables handed over by the previous HTML form. The query is executed and after a couple of breaks, if the result is not zero, we get a successful login. Logically, this approach is sound, since we only get a result if both username and password are correct. Let's see how it works in practice. Now, if I enter Alice and her respective password, we get a successful login. I printed the final query here so we can see what's going on, but obviously don't ever do that in practice. If I enter a wrong password, we see that login fails, as expected, since the where statement is no longer true. All fine so far. Now let's look at the SQL injection, which works like this. You enter username string and you enter a second operation, which is always true, such as one equals one. Finally, the two dashes comment out everything that comes afterwards. We see here the successful login since the where statement of the SQL query evaluates to true because one equals one. It doesn't matter what I enter for the username, I just need to end the string uh, to inject my one equals one. This is a trivial example again, of course. However, it shows how dangerous it is to not sanitize your inputs. Best practice uh, is to use prepared statements, which means that you don't directly execute SQL queries with provided inputs, but this video is about input validation, so let's look at how we can improve our code to make it secure. We can use regular patterns like this one in PHP, which just allows letters and numbers. The function prec replace replaces all characters that are not within the variable pattern with an empty char, effectively erasing them. 
Let's see how this works in practice. Again, normal login works. But trying the SQL injection now fails since all the special characters are now erased. We are safe. Or are we? Remember that we manipulate the SQL query and that it is not limited to the username. I can equally as easily try my luck on the password front. And since I didn't use any encryption or hashing, the password gets passed on just as I enter it. The problem is you cannot sanitize a password string, since you maybe want to encourage using special characters in your user's passwords. Now again, this example might be very artificial, however, using prepared statements is the way to go regarding SQL, and I'll talk about that uh, in another video. But for now, I hope I made clear that input validation is a crucial aspect of secure coding. Always validate and sanitize user input to prevent vulnerabilities and protect your applications from potential attacks. I've only shown two attacks and there are many, many more like command line injections and so on. You can imagine what these attacks do. Just try to get your user inputs uh, sanitized and validated before you process them. Thank you for watching this video on input validation. I hope you found it informative and helpful in enhancing your understanding of secure coding practices. Stay tuned for more videos on security and privacy and on secure coding on our channel. Like our video, subscribe and I'll see you in the next video.